size of the British economy. This is exceptional. Foreign assets held by British capital are five times the size of the British economy. If we include derivatives, they are seven and a half times the size of the British economy. And of these assets, 60% of them, or a sum three times the size of the British economy, are in the form of loans and deposits abroad by British banks. This is, to put it at its simplest, a gigantic usury capital. And the more was spent on developing the atomic bomb than on all scientific research conducted in previous history. This was then exceeded only by spending on the means of delivering nuclear weapons, that is, research into missiles and rockets. The current government says it intends to cut military spending by 8%. We will see about that while it's busy conducting new wars in Libya and who else has it got lined up? Syria or Iran? I don't know yet. But it will maintain all its spending on military research and development. That is a quarter of all government spending on scientific research goes on military. And that is about double what it spends on health and environmental protection research. 60, no less than 60 British universities are engaged in military research if contracts from arms companies and the Ministry of Defence. They're buying up education and science. Pope, who was the last Pope before Benedict? John Paul, was it? I went in front of a church here, I expect that. <laughs> anyway, okay, John Paul II said, you know, and he warned about the militarization of science, and he was dead right. Since 1991, the year of the Soviet Union's collapse, Britain and the US have been permanently at war, seeking to achieve global hegemony. Since the end of the Second World War, you can count 131 separate different occasions when British military forces have been in operation overseas. There has only been one year, 1968, when British soldiers have not been killed on active service abroad. We can expect this tendency towards militarism to increase as the entire system of capitalist exploitation is in global crisis. When US and British submarines fired 112 cruise missiles at Libya on 19th of March this year, it was Britain's 46th separate military intervention in the Middle East and North Africa since the end of World War II. <laughs> These reported incursions into other people's countries have nothing to do with promoting democracy or saving lives, as they said about Libya and elsewhere. They kill people. They arm and finance and train the dictatorial regimes of the Middle East and North Africa. Five of the current Gulf current Gulf emirs and sheikhs like Gaddafi trained at the Royal Military College at Sandhurst. That's the reality. They trained the Sheikh of Bahrain, United Emirates, <coughs> Kuwait, Oman, you go on, at the Royal Military College <coughs> along probably, well, probably a bit before Prince Harry. But, um, you know, with his, his, his ilk. Five, yes, we've done that. Um, they have intervened to control oil, to control oil, its distribution, 
and thereby preserve the global rule of capitalism and imperialism. Oil spurted out of the ground in Persia, Iran in 1908. Britain was able to monopolise this critical resource. A century of oil has been essential for the development of car culture, for the leafy suburbs that surround cities like London, Birmingham, Manchester, Leeds, Toronto, New York, you go on, yes? Car culture, leafy suburbs, cheap jet travel, the agrochemical industry, yeah, where the fertilizers and the machines, yeah, use oil and gas. And for cities like this, London, ablaze with lights throughout the night. Why? Because of oil and gas stolen or taken under the guardianship, yeah of sheikhs trained at the Royal Military College at Sanders, along with Harry and his ilk. The collapse of the Soviet Union and social, socialist bloc did not bring a peace dividend. Far from it. World military spending in 2000 was 810 billion. Last year, it was 1.63 trillion dollars. It has doubled, more than doubled, in a decade, military spending. The United States accounts for 43% of military spending in the world. An increase of 81% on 2001 spending. And about 8 to 10 times the amount of the second biggest arms spender, China. The profits of US arms companies have quadrupled in 10 years. Invest in war. That's the message that the stock exchange should be saying if they were honest about what's really going on. Quadrupled profits in 10 years. 11 out of the 100 top arms companies in the world are based in Britain. According to the Ministry of Defence, the United Kingdom security sector, that's what they call it, has 18,000 companies and employs 335,000 people. About one in eight British manufacturing workers works in the production of armaments. About 10 years ago it was one in 10. Soon that will be all we produce, weapons. And all we study at university, war. BAE Systems UK is the largest British arms company and in 2009 had the second biggest arms sales in the world. However, if we combine the UK sales with those of BAE Systems operations in the US and Australia, it had the largest arms sales of any company in the world in 2009 by far. British arms sales to the Middle East and North Africa have increased by 30% since the Arab Spring began in January <coughs> this year. Britain is second only to the US as arms supplier to the Middle East. What has this got to do with democracy and human rights, Mr. Cameron? Such words are mere cynical window dressing in the mouths of British politicians. In early May, you may remember this, there were peaceful protests held at night in Saudi Arabia. Within days of those protests appearing on television, the United States government said it would sell Saudi security forces $330 million worth of night vision and thermal imaging equipment. That's 
President Obama's belief in democracy, supplying night vision equipment to the Saudi armed forces. This is the reality behind the fine words about democracy. Imperialism, US and British imperialism, prepared to fight to the death, to use torture, to wage war, to keep control of the Middle East and North Africa. For that is what the golden calf commands the British capitalist class to do. Gangsters sit in the counting houses, own and direct the banks. Hoodlums patrol the corridors of power while con men draft the laws. Well done, keep it up! Oh! Down with imperialism! Down with war! Long live humanity! Thank you. Okay, show your appreciation and maximum.